Welcome back. And we are moving into our first conversation for today as we talk about mental health and suicide. We have with us on set Kendra Hoyt, who is a life coach, counselor, and lecturer at Gillen University. In the middle, we have Dr. Eve Aird, who is the provost at Gillen University. And on the end, we have Amy Windsor, who's a community member from Cayo. Good morning and welcome. I'm loving the Cayo vibe. I'm loving that <laughs> vibe that you guys are bringing in. Yeah. Let's, let's, we let's, want to say yeah. thank you for, thank you for, for, traveling, for traveling so early. But let, yeah. me, let me jump in here and just talk about the importance of this conversation. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's one I think that we don't get to have often right. enough, but very timely. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, last year, uh, Galen University partnered with the Ministry of Human Development. You were here to tell us a bit about it, to yeah. talk about suicide prevention. Dr. Aird, let's, let's do a bit of a recap on uh, why this program was first started and how it's going. Oh, good morning. Yes. Um, this is, in part, it's a very personal story for me. Almost eight years ago, my youngest child took his life. Um, for a while, it was very difficult to talk about that with, um, in public. It's, it's very difficult to talk about it on the air. Um, suicide is such a taboo subject. Um, I remember w one of the folks who came to visit with me on the evening of his death came and says, you mustn't blame yourself too much. She actually told me that uh, in the midst of the raw grief. Um, over the years, though, since his death, while I was the president at Sacred Heart College and, and immediately after when I went back to Galen University as a provost, a number of young people took their lives in, Ka in the Kaya district. And I remember sitting in my office, um, I think it must have been in 2016, Kendra, mm -hmm. yep. when the third, a third child, a third teenage girl in the Kaya district <coughs> from Mopan Technical High School, I heard that a third child had taken her life. Mm -hmm. And there were all, all kinds of conversations and talks about what was happening, yeah. why these girls did it. And I picked up the phone and I called my friend and colleague at the Citadel University, Larry Daniel. We had been having a conversation with Larry about doing some joint programs. And I said, I need your help. A third child has just taken their lives. We need to do something about suicide prevention. And I hooked Larry up with Kendra. Um, and I met with CEO Alpuche. And I said, this is what I want to do at Galen University. We want to do some workshops on suicide prevention. Would you help? Is there anything that I need to do? And she says, beautiful. This feeds right into a Youth Rise project that they had. It was one of the activities on that project. They would partner with us. Um, I think that people don't talk about suicide in Belize. The, um, our young people have a lot of, it's just impacting them. Kendra can speak more about that. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of bullying. There's just a pressure about who am I as a, teen, as a young person, the pressure to succeed at school, and then just the all in negative images that we are bombarded with all the crime and violence in Belize that we hear on a daily basis. How do we deal with that as a society? Well, not everybody will think to hurt themselves, but for a young child, a young defenseless child who has nowhere to turn to, we need to prepare young people. We need to prepare people who work with at-risk young people, those that, who are at high risk of self-harm, um, the people on the front, front lines. We don't have that kind of training in Belize. Um, it wasn't available. Yeah. And we were in a very fortunate position to partner with people at the Citadel the University, Guy and Julie Lagan, um, the Consortium on Belize Education Corporation, the Youth Rise, um, the Ministry of Human Development and Youth Rise. Mm -hmm. And this year with the Mental Health uh, Department, mm -hmm. we were able to partner with them and provide it. So that, that, that's why we We've done that. What was the aim of this particular project? Is it simply to have uh, these frontline personnel have an understanding of suicide, or is it also a preventative measure? An understanding, uh, b being able to recognize those children who are at risk mm -hmm. and having the tools mm -hmm. to work with them and to, to get them past that point uh, yeah. and to provide ongoing care for them. And I Kendra, think Kendra could speak more about that. Uh, How important is it that we have conversations about suicide? Oh. I, I have to be honest, after the recent suicide right. of Anthony Bourdain and uh, Kate Spade, right. I saw some things online that 
really shocked me from mm. people I really didn't expect. Mm -hmm. A lot of blaming, mm -hmm. a lot of, uh, you know, uh, obviously comparing the, the wealth and fame right. to yeah. it, they must be happy. Yeah. Because they have Especially money, to they're career. famous. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. People like that don't take their own lives. Why would yeah. they? Because are they Williams. happy? Or um, how selfish right, and, right. you know, uh, they needed God. Mm. That was another one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I really, I really examined just how much we speak about it in the public yeah. realm. And, and, and I want you to, to be able to address that. What happens when we don't talk about it? We keep it the taboo This topic. is what happens. People take their lives in secret and without feeling, mm -hmm. with feeling that they're alone, truly trapped with no, no way out. Mm -hmm. And so you ask why, how important <coughs> is it? It's, it's deathly important, mm -hmm. right? And so, um, and it's not that talking about suicide in itself as an, as an isolated situation, but talking about our emotions, our feelings, yeah. our sadness, the dark places that you mentioned earlier in the show, um, we have all felt bad. We've all felt sad. We've all felt sorrow. Maybe we've even felt depression to some degree or another. Yeah. Um, and maybe you even recall back at a time in your life where you felt like, man, this is just never going to end. Is it ever going to change? Um, and maybe somebody in your life told you this too shall pass or they gave you some sort of saying that would help you pass through this. But the reality is we get stuck sometimes. Yeah. And for some people, um, mental illness plays a role and depression gets so entrenched in their lives that for them they really can't get out of the darkness. Mm -hmm. And they feel like they can't even reach for a door that will open up the light. Um, and they can't imagine getting past that. And so unless and until we open conversations that allow people to hurt, to be sorrowful, to be in pain, and that's okay, yeah. but to be held in that space, to, be, um, to have compassion, to not feel shame or guilt, to not feel that they're sinning um, by, by feeling that, yeah. but that it's okay and that they can be held through it to get to the other side. Um, until we open that door, we're going to continue to see this. So whether someone is rich and famous or poor and impoverished and everything in between, we're human beings and we feel, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so that's what's crucial about this conversation. Mm -hmm. We have to destigmatize the conversations. And mm -hmm. in Belize, for many reasons, uh, we have enormous layers of stigma around depression and mental illness. Yes. You know, I, I, and I, I, I want to jump in here because I, I, I have a friend. Well, I had yeah. a friend who who took his life, okay. you know, and there were many reasons behind it. Well, I, I, you know, we, we know the reason why now, but uh, back then we didn't have, or we didn't seem to have the avenue mm. to talk to somebody about mm -hmm. how we felt. And there's so many people who are so joyful, like mm -hmm. myself, mm -hmm. but at the same time, we do suffer. Mm -hmm. why, aren't we, or why aren't we receptive to, to, uh, to uh, I, I would want to say a heartful conversation. Mm. Mm. Why aren't we, why are, is it something that only happens right here at home? Right. Or is it something that, 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 that we're not exposed to? Why aren't we receptive to conversation of hurt? We're scared, or it's yeah. fear. Yes. And what another, do I do? Yeah. What's my yeah. responsibility now? Mm -hmm. and another, right? another reason it would be is because um, when, we, when we speak about these things, uh, uh, we don't want actually for everyone to know, and, and so we decide like, okay, well, I'm keeping it to myself, whatever um, troubles, anxiety, depression, stress, because there's many factors that contribute to the person taking, um, taking his or her life. Um, but it's morely because the society has played a role that it is decharacterizes de 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 um, the value of the human being. Mm -hmm. So you don't really talk about emotions because the first thing you think, oh, probably, you know, the way they express themselves is like, Oh, well, you're going to see me as someone weak, mm. someone that's strong. And so mm. all of these things play an important role in limiting someone to speak about, like what you said, mm. open up, you know, be open about your conversations, be open about your feelings, about your thoughts. So when we hear about someone famous um, committing suicide, like Anthony Bourdain or, or someone else, mm. uh, we go like, yeah, they had everything to be happy. But mm. the person was around many people around him. You know, and yet probably he didn't have one person he could confide to mm. yeah. to really let go um, whatever emotions he was having. Yeah. So a listening ear, a true, a truly listening ear. Yeah. And I think yeah. that's part of the conversation. Maybe this is a part of the the yeah. training itself. Mm -hmm. There's a bravery that uh, one must exhibit to exactly. say to mm -hmm. someone else, "I don't feel right." 
Mm, right. Something is just right. bringing me down. I'm sad. I'm dissatisfied with life. I just, maybe not in those words, but right. just express the sadness. Right. But from the other end, uh -huh. it's also hard to digest. Yeah. We don't know what to say. Yeah. I, the classic example, when someone loses a loved one, how many of us struggle to make that <laughs> call or right. send that message right. or say something other than mm -hmm. this too shall pass mm -hmm. or God has a plan? <laughs> yeah. um, so wh what, is, what is the right balance? So let me this? say this, Marlene, in mm -hmm. reference to this training, one of the things that was really important myself, Guy, and Jill um, did was really work around helping people not only assess and be aware of clients and young people or adults who are in that space, but Marlene, to ask the question. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you this, I'll be very candid. We actually practiced having the room full of people, 35, 45 people here in Belize, practice saying, do you plan to kill yourself? Mm -hmm. Literally saying that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So even just now, as you heard me say that, I could see your reaction. Mm -hmm. Do you want to kill yourself? To say that to another person, mm -hmm. Number one opens the door for a yes, possible yes, right? Now what do I do? What's my responsibility if you say yes to that question? So part of the training involved not only being comfortable asking the question, but now how do I respond? And, and Amy says something really important, and we talked about this the other day. Mm -hmm. Having an authentic, genuine, compassionate mm -hmm. person who's connected to you to listen mm -hmm. and receive that response in a way that doesn't feel like, oh gosh, I've scared them away, mm -hmm. but yeah. they're gonna sit in this space with me mm -hmm. of discomfort is key. Mm -hmm. So teaching and training and getting folks comfortable with now what's the next step. Mm -hmm. And then we did start to, you know, for the intermediate uh, training, we went to that next level. But I want you to know that that was one of the crucial parts of the training, was to teach people just to ask that question. Yeah. When they have identified with a young person, this is someone who's really at a low place, how do I say, do you plan to kill yourself? Have you thought about killing yourself? That's a huge it's a sentence. Brazen question. That's huge, yeah. right? And another thing <laughs> is that um, it's when we, yeah, when we reach to the point where, um, like what you said, what do you say? Mm -hmm. we're not the society is really not prepared for how do I handle this? Mm -hmm. What do I say? Mm -hmm. Should I say something? Should I intervene? The, the, the situation with this is not, um, really we're not really emotionally prepared for anything of this. Mm -hmm. But um, having, having just one person just to listen, mm -hmm. that's the key, yeah. mm -hmm. to be there. Because um, your words um, at that moment, is, is, it's not really something they really need and to hear. But having you physically there, knowing that you care, knowing that, um, that you're there for them, that is, that is actually the key to preventing yeah. a suicide. Amy, I, yeah. why did you choose to get involved in this? I had um, a personal experience many years ago, and I, I consider myself one of the survivors in attempting suicide myself. Yeah. And it's like what um, Dr. Ayer said, these things are not easy to speak about because first of all, um, people see me as this strong woman I am, and deep down inside, I know I have this value, yeah. but at that time that I attempted my suicide, it was like, um, I, I survived it, but after I survived it, um, the stigma was horrible, mm -hmm. it was really horrible. It was between the family, <coughs> you know, it was between the closest persons. You know, and then it's like what Dr. Aaron mentioned, sometimes I think they mean the best in trying to comfort you. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you know, it takes a long time but at the, at the same time, they're not really, um, they don't know, they don't know. So it's, for me, it's crucial that this, the, the, the other side that is watching yeah. understands that it's very important. Even if you don't say a word, just the thought that you're mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. that you're, you're being able to help, <laughs> that the person knows that, you know, you're not alone. Yeah. Simply, you're not alone. So the stigma for me was horrible after this. It was really, really horrible. And it happened so many years ago. Um, mm -hmm. My daughter was just a baby. Uh, it was I was going through a time where we call it post, um, postpartum. Yes, postpartum depression. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and and you could, that's like a time where everybody would say, "Well, you should be so happy. You have a and baby very girl." Of how you parent. Yes, yeah. and yeah. it's like yeah. you have all the reasons to be so so happy. Yet I couldn't find myself um, not knowing how to cope with the sadness, and the severe melancholy that I felt. Mm -hmm. You know, it was overwhelming. I took care of this child. I loved this child. I knew deep down inside I loved her. She, she meant the whole world to me, you know. I've, 
first time being a mom, it was amazing. But at the same time, why am I crying? Why do I feel so sad, you know? How could I cope with this child? How do I... And it's not that I didn't have the support of, of someone teaching me how to take care of a, of a baby. It's just that deep down inside of me, I was struggling with all of these emotions. And you know, when I attempted suicide, it was that my child already was like almost completing the month. Mm -hmm. So it was the past two weeks, three weeks. And it reached to a point where I had to hide so would someone would come and visit the child? Because you know, a newborn baby brings joy to everyone. Everyone, everyone wants yes, to see the yes. baby, come and congratulate you. I reached to the point where I had to literally dry my eyes, eyes. and try to make sure that I put on a happy face. Which is, a, which is again hard. Exactly, right. that was so right. difficult. That is was, and that is what brought me, um, like tearing me down, tearing me down because I knew I needed help. But how could I go to someone and tell them, you know what, I am extremely sad. You know, I am extremely depressed. I don't really know how to cope with these emotions. And so when I did it, it was not because I didn't love my child. When I did it, it's because that was the only way out for me. To stop the pain. To stop the pain. Mm -hmm. And not only to stop the pain, Marlene, but <coughs> to reach a point where I said, you know, it's better off me going and she actually having someone who would be constantly happy with her. Mm -hmm. And it was not an easy choice, you know. It was really difficult. And well, we expect sometimes that after something like this happens, um, more compassionate are people around you. Mm -hmm. Then the stigma came in. After I survived it, I went home, I, I got treatment, I got everything. Wow, the stigma was horrible. It's there, like, really? You felt judged. Yes, mm. I mean, you're crazy. How could you do this? <coughs> We're not thinking about your child. You're, you're like selfish. Yes, you're selfish. Involved. You know, yes. you, uh, you're not a weak. You're, you're actually a weak person. And and then, I realized that, that um, it was it's something that is real. It's something that could ha it has it happened to me. It can also happen to anyone. Mm. But I did not because of mental health issues and 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 the um. The way it's processed here in Belize and, and the stigma that's behind it, because, you know, first thing when someone said, you know, well, I remember the doctor telling me, you know what, you need to go and see a professional. Mm -hmm. It's like, I am not crazy, doctor. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the first thing I told the doctor. Mm -hmm. I am not crazy. And he goes, no, it's nothing about crazy. You know, but it's like, that's the first thing that I said is, I'm not crazy. And then he would go like, uh, no, you do need help. This is what, this was, um, if you, if you wouldn't be found on time, you would have committed suicide. It's, this is not, it's not like an option. You should get help. But I told the doctor, no. So he described what he, at the moment, could be beneficial. But obviously, he was not trained to, to deal with this. And he just knew that he had to assess me to an avenue where mm -hmm. I can find help. Uh, but I didn't. I didn't. Wow. I didn't. Because, again, I felt like really bad. And this is where it's very important so for the society to realize that you need to encourage them. You need to be supportive of them, in, even if it includes you going with them mm -hmm. yeah. to that point. You know why? Because um, if I would have had that, I would have seek help immediately. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But because I did not want to be um, entering into a psychiatrist's office or someone seeing me, I go like, no, I'm not doing this, you mm -hmm. know, it's because one family does feel embarrassed and shame. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, yeah. that's a lot of it. And the first thing they say is you're dragging the family name down. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. uh, we might we might say that it's like absurd, but that's these true. things are true. And I have lived it because of my experience. I have I have been able to speak with many persons who have had um, many issues of this suicidal, and I've I've been able to to a certain level have the empathy with them, you know, yeah. to feel what they're going and because I've suffered, I've survived it. You know, Are they comfortable with you being public with your story as well? Right now, yes. Okay. I have a lot of support from them now, yes. Yeah. Because now through the years where they realize that these things are, in my case, it was, it was actually genetic, mm -hmm. which I didn't, because I didn't yeah. know, I didn't know my mom. Yeah. I didn't know um, my sisters and um, I grew up with grandparents. So 
getting in touch with the family and knowing all of these things enlightened me. And so the whole family realized, oh, wow, she has it genetically, you know, yeah. Yeah. it was Mental every day. Yeah. Can be. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, um, I have a sister. I have, I have a sister when she had her baby. Um, usually when they have the babies, they, talk, they take them away and they clean them first. Yeah. She said, no, you can't do that. You need, the, you need to give me that baby immediately. Otherwise, I will not want the baby again. Wow. Mm -hmm. And we go, yes, and we go and we would say, exactly, we would say like, how will you not want your baby? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, but it's, she, the doctor that time understood her very well. They left the baby just the way, just the wrapped the baby, yes. gave her to her and she had it all day. It's just, it, it goes to the point where she actually said, you give me the baby now, because or not, I will not take the baby mm -hmm. again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, you know, we talk about the different kinds yeah. of depression. Right. Postpartum is right. one we really don't talk about. We yeah. definitely don't talk but about. Yeah. Let me let me take the opportunity here to 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 ask, what did you find, both as a, a parent uh, and as an attempted suicide a suicide survivor? What did you find to be the most challenging? in having other people understand about what you were going through personally? Um, <clears throat> for me, in my, in my case, apart from the one person who, as, who gave me the insensitive advice, um, I think that I had, a, I, I, my family and I had a very supportive community who came around us. Um, he, Martin had grown up in the community. He was loved mm -hmm. by hundreds of people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the whole Sacred Heart College family, mm -hmm. they came around and they supported us tremendously. So, um, I think perhaps the most difficult thing was counseling and supporting people who were also grief-stricken <coughs> in the midst of my own grief, because mm -hmm. this was not only my loss, but it was everybody's loss mm -hmm. in the instance of the San Ignacio mm -hmm. Sacred Heart College family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I think, I think for, for other parents, um, and, and uh, you know, in other cases that I'm aware of, people hide the suicide. Mm -hmm. they, don't, they don't admit it publicly. Um, and I, I think it's, it's, it's dealing with that stigma yeah. Yeah. that we are also socialized mm -hmm. into believing that there is something wrong with my, there was something wrong with my parenting, my faith in God, um, my belief community. I know that that is not true. In fact, one of the best things that happened to me during the time, apart from the love that surrounded us, was having a Roman Catholic priest actually coming in to do the mass for me on the ninth day and saying to me, I needed to tell you this. And he gave me an, an, a letter and he told me of, <clears throat> and actually it was, it was two priests. One, one um, in Belize City sent a message through Family Connections assuring me that my child had gone to heaven. Mm. And that was important to me, that, to, for me to know that because we were taught as children that you commit suicide, you go to you hell. Go to hell. Yeah. Yes. Your soul will roast in hell for eternity. Mm -hmm. In both these two cases, one um, was a Jesuit priest, another was a salt, saying to me, your child, be assured that your child is in heaven. And I knew that in, um, instinctively because my child was a believing um, person. Yeah. In fact, he read the Bible daily. And I, 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 you know, and I, I know obviously it was something that we talked about over the years, but to have that, that assurance, yes. that was important to me. Mm -hmm. um, but I think for, um, for families, for s in some instances, it might be just trying to deal with the press coverage of the, of the suicide yeah. mm -hmm. um, and, and, um, and, and hiding it, protecting yourself, protecting what you thought was your parenting skills, your family support, and so on. Uh, yeah, I, uh, please, I, I, uh, I am, I'm blown away. I know we, we had the conversation last year, and I'm mm. trying to uh, gather myself from it. But I'm, you know, I'm, I listen to you, Amy, and 
And I wondered to myself, <coughs> I listened to all of you, and I wondered to myself, like, where are you now? What, what you know, you, you, you've been down that road for both of you, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, listening to you talk, I feel pressure. And I feel the pressure because you actually <coughs> had to go through the stigma and discrimination, both of you. And then people keep on now telling you that you're weak. And then why would you do it? Because you, know, you have a young baby. Mm -hmm. There are so many people right now in the position that you were back then. And I'm trying mm -hmm. to keep myself like for real. This is very important. Mm -hmm. And they would want to find that way out. Where are you now? Where are both of you now at this point when we've got people with this kind of thought? Mm -hmm. Where are we now? Okay, well for me, I've, um, I'm right now at a wonderful point in my life, wonderful. Why do I say wonderful? I probably could have been like, in this point of my life, I could have been like this years ago. I didn't have to wait for the second or the third child to have found the help finally. Yeah. That is what I waited. I waited so much years to find the help. Yes. So. Um, that's why um, now it is, it's, it's more easier to speak about it. It's still difficult because of obviously the, the way it's, it's um, perceived. Um, mm -hmm. But to me, it's more important that someone in the show, even if it's one person, yes. finds the help now, mm -hmm. immediately. Mm -hmm. Why do I say now and immediately? Because now we have a, a level of knowledge to these things now. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's been shown, it's been educated. It's be so now it's still at a, a time where it's understood, comprehended. Mm -hmm. And um, another thing is that it's very important is that um, uh, the, the Ministry of Health provides even the medication, the assistance, mm -hmm. and they have people like Ms. Kendra, Dr. Ayer, persons like myself, people that are in this environment that you can actually go and talk to them. You, know, the, you can relate to them, you can walk up to them and tell them, you know what, I, I, I feel like this. And these people here, these persons, this wonderful woman here, it, they, they can actually empathize with you. They, they know who you're going through, they know your feelings. And um, it's, for me, it's, it's, um, it's a process where it has taken a long time, but I would suggest you don't have to wait a long time to enjoy a quality of life. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to wait a long time to, to find the help. You know, it, it, it's there, you know, it's, it's, it's there. And um, for me, I, I found like what um, Dr. Ayrton, for me, it's for, it, I, I enter a, a spiritual level yeah. right now in my life. And the things of, of, of it's, uh, things of God for me, it's very important. So when someone, like what um, Dr. Ayrton said, when someone would say, uh, you don't have enough faith. No, no, no. It is not about a lack of faith. It's not a l about a lack of um, of of of, of um, weakness or or, or um, you know we, we mm. tend to exaggerate exaggerate the um, the situations even more worse. Mm. Uh, it's it's about it's about that person who really needs the help. Yes, that's the person most mm. important. Yes, you know. And so I would I would um, I would love like what you said. For those who are right now in that position and seeing and going through it, how can they reach to this point that I am? Yeah. It's simple. It's very simple. You, all you need to do is talk. Ask for help. Find the help, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The help will be given to you. Mm -hmm. Don't wait for long. Mm -hmm. in, in my case, I believe that God places us where he wants us to be. Mm -hmm. One of the little messages, gift cards that I got, um, sympathy cards that I got at the time of Martin's death was, uh, it had a little message on it that if God brings you to it, he's going to bring you through it. I believe that there's a purpose for our lives and that everything has happened. You know, we might go through some challenging times, times that are very painful um, in our lives, but there is something beyond that, that he has for us. I think that part of my purpose in life is for me to be in, in this position where I have a Kendra mm -hmm. and an Amy uh, who will support us. I have the Ministry of Human Development providing um, suicide 
awareness prevention mm -hmm. um, training for people across this country, I think is one of the things that we most needed. Okay. One of my deepest regrets is that when we started the, the classes um, in, in San Ignacio last year, we had hoped because, because the Kaya district has such a high incidence of youth suicide, mm -hmm. my hope, my prayer was that I would have had a lot of teachers, um, mm -hmm. people, school principals that the, school, that the educational community in San Ignacio, Santa Elena, Benke, would have supported it and would have sent their school counselors or the teachers that they assigned to be school counselors to be a part of the training. Um, because I know it is attempted suicide is present in the school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This training th deals mm -hmm. with some of the issues that teachers deal with in the classroom, just the bullying mm -hmm. for one thing. And we have, we've heard about Anthony Boudrain and Kate Spade, mm -hmm. but there are also stories about children mm -hmm. committing suicide because of the intense bullying that they have gotten. Yes, it's happening in, in North America, yeah. but, it but every time here. it's um, mm -hmm. the, it the U U.S. sneezes, we catch a cold. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to happen here mm -hmm. in Belize, and it's happening in Belize too. Mm -hmm. Children are being bullied in Belize. They are being bullied in Belize. And so for me, I'm, I'm in a place where I can provide some assistance. I can't do the training myself, but I could cause it to happen. Yeah. 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 And uh, we have, uh, at Galen, we've con cultivated the partnerships with organizations that can assist us in, in doing this. It's because it's not just Galen that's doing it, it's a yeah. whole group of um, <coughs> people that's, that's providing the funding and the expertise. Mm -hmm. um, I, my regret is that we don't have more school teachers in, involved, mm -hmm. and they need it yeah. a lot. Mm -hmm. that's, that's definitely a direction that you need to go. Kendra, let's, let's, let's try to bring this home too, because I think one of the <coughs> things, you mentioned the press coverage, and, and we've repeatedly said on the station that we have a general policy because of the research that shows that there's a, a copycat uh, syndrome that happens right. after a publicized yes. uh, suicide, yes. except in exceptional circumstances, we do. Right. Um, when I saw one of the articles that came out after the, the coverage, mm -hmm. one of the articles that said, check on your friends, mm -hmm. and especially yes. friends. I have friends who have, uh, you know, anxiety, who right. troubled with depression, right. and, and I reached out right. and, you know, he just said, hey, how are things going? Right. Um, but it was important because I think that it, that it resonated with me because I think we don't realize how hearing these stories yeah. and seeing what happens impacts us. Absolutely. Whether we have a mental health uh, issue or not, Correct. It, it leaves us with a sense of sadness. Correct. Yeah. Um, Talk to us, though, about the difference between someone who gets sad mm -hmm. over hearing these stories and someone who gets sad and thinks, maybe I should do this too. What, what, is, what are some of the things that we need to know about a person in a mental state right. that may potentially lead to a suicidal act? Well, I think one of the things you want to start to look at when you're talking to friends and asking them how they're doing, how are you receiving this yeah. information, you want to know the totality of their life, what's going on, if they're in an isolated space in their life. Um, are things, um, are they feeling an anxiety or stress around it? Are they at a place where they, and, and back to my earlier thing about are you going to kill yourself, but are, are people imagining planning a suicide? Do they have a way? Um, are they capable of doing it? Do they have access to the means of some form of, of harming, self-harm? Um, so these are things you want to look at. Um, how strong is their desire? Is, is it to a place of like, yeah, I really don't want to be in this life, um, and then the capability to do it. Yeah. So you, wanna, you want to explore, and we trained the staff on things like that, capability, desire, um, access to things, intent. How, what level of intent does someone have? Is it strictly what you said? I'm just sad, this is so overwhelming. It sort of brings a mortality to light, which happens, right? Mm -hmm. So now we go, oh my gosh, death is, Death is actually our only guarantee in life. Yeah. So mm -hmm. every one of us is born in this world to die one day. Mm -hmm. yeah. We don't know when or how. It is our only gar guarantee. Yeah. Now that said, we hope that between you know birth and death that we live a fruitful quality life, right. like Amy right. said, um, mm -hmm. and that whatever happens, happens in its due time. So as you're talking to friends, allowing the conversation to be organic and natural and authentic, 
And keeping in your mind, you know, does this person expressing a level of intent that's really mm -hmm. like, wow, on a scale of one to five, kind of five being the highest, yeah. and you're starting to sense your own anxiety as they're talking, mm -hmm. and asking them things like, you know, if it, um, have you thought about it? And if you mm -hmm. have, how would you do it if you did it? Do you have mm -hmm. access to those means? You feeling comfortable enough to ask those questions. Yeah. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I want you to know that, that, and Amy, correct me if I'm wrong in this, in this instance, but in that place, you know, the person you're asking this of, it may feel that you're being like, ooh, that's kind of rude or that's, you know, that's crass mm -hmm. to ask that. No, because what you do is allow for that person to, to have an opening, to say, you know what, actually I am thinking about that. Mm -hmm. And you know what, I dream about it, I write about it. I have planned out things. I've planned driving my car off the bridge or mm -hmm. I have rope in my house. Mm -hmm or mm -hmm. I have pills, I have mm -hmm. access to pills in my mom's cabinet. Mm -hmm. or what, And so they're going to start to talk. You would imagine that they shut down and absolutely not no. because they're mm -hmm. waiting for you mm -hmm. to open the door mm -hmm. for them to feel safe to talk. Mm -hmm. yes. So yeah. whatever hesitation you have asking those questions, you have to rectify that with yourself uh -huh. so that you can ask the question so they can answer. That, that is very true what Ms. Kendra said because um, that's the one thing, that's why we don't talk about it because right. we go, oh, am I going to give that person ideas? Yes. Will that person probably be speaking about it? No. Go ahead and do it. Mm -hmm. Will that person be no. encouraged? Mm -hmm. Is it the right thing to do? If it's the right, right. Uh, should it? But it's what she said is very important. Yeah. Yes, it is the right thing to do. Yeah. Talk about it. Ask them about that. But, uh, you know... Uh, you are not going to plant the seed. No. You no, will no, not no. plant the seed. No. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm listening, and uh, I'm here thinking as well, especially for, you know, yeah. our folks, how do we detect? What are the signs? What are the signs? Yes. How do we... Wh what do we have to do? I mean, do we get it from a random conversation? Or is there a sign? Is there a red ear? Or is there yeah. a marking on my forehead that there says are, yeah, signs. Ch there are changes signs. in behavior yes. routine yes. behavior can we can we simplify that though a mm -hmm. bit? because I also find that sometimes people don't necessarily understand that what do you mean by change in behavior okay for example mm -hmm. uh, you guys would have someone very close to you yes. mm -hmm. Let, let's put it first that way um, you know that person it could be a brother a sister a friend your friend from high school your child your yeah. child mm -hmm. Yeah, and, um, and uh, your spouse, whatever you, you call it. And, and um, stresses of life in itself are, are really stressful, you know. Yeah. You can actually go through many phases. But um, when we call about changes, um, you will notice that, um, for example, if your friend, um, she's loving, kind, and, and, and compassion, the changes you will see in her is probably extreme love and compassion. Mm -hmm. Extreme. What I mean extreme is that mm -hmm. that person will go ahead and give away all her stuff mm -hmm. to everyone. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, and then you will go, let's, say, let's, let's, let's put it more personalized. Let's say me and you, Marlene, are the best of friends. And you know me to be a very compassionate, loving, and caring person. Now, one day you come and see me like, you know, I'm not open up about my feelings with you, mm -hmm. no matter how best of friends we are. And you come and you start to see, well, I come and tell you, Marlene, here, all my set of jewelry, you know. And then you go, oh, thank you. And then you start to see that behavior. i giving out my stuff, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And then that's a sign. You will go, well, but she likes this jewelry. Yeah. She wore it mm -hmm. a lot of times. Why is she giving it away? Yeah, yeah. You know, so there, there the are, artist. yes, there you are. You become very withdrawn. You yes. don't answer the phone. You lock yourself in the right. room. You sleep a lot. Too. Isolating. Isolation of yeah. oneself. Um, a shift, as you said, in um, yeah. any one extreme behavior extreme. or temperament yeah. or personality trait suddenly gets to one extreme or the other. I will say this, though. Um, I want to caution us around this piece. And I know, thank you for highlighting um, those suicide warning signs. Um, Sometimes there are none. Just please recognize mm -hmm. for those of us who feel a sense of responsibility, mm -hmm. sometimes there are no signs. Sometimes mm -hmm. an individual mm -hmm. chooses to take their life in a very mm -hmm. quiet, isolated way, and you never know. And there mm -hmm. were no signs. And in hindsight, you may look back and rack your brain for mm -hmm. your own sense of responsibility and realize mm -hmm. there's nothing I could have seen. And so when a person has resolved that they do want to take their own life, mm -hmm. in some cases, there simply is nothing you can do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. and I think we need to 
we need to be okay with that yeah. because we will spend so much time feeling mm -hmm. guilty and a yeah. sense of responsibility and going in mm -hmm. hindsight and racking our brain of 20,000 things that we should have caught in advance because somehow we could have saved this person from killing themselves. Right. Yeah. And if someone wants yeah. to take their life, they're going, they're to, going do to do it. Yeah, and as a survivor, that's the main thing I actually, actually um, express. Um, my intention was never to leave pain behind. Right hurt love yes. my, my loved ones you know this this was not my intention you know yeah. I survived it but it was never my intention it was not for attention mm -hmm. it was not my intention either right. to cause pain it's just the way out it's what Miss Kendra said there are people who are gonna do it but you cannot assume the responsibility for them doing it right. it's nothing they about they didn't do it to hurt you no, no they don't no. do it to hurt you it's not about no. parenting it's not about being not a good husband not being a good friend, mm -hmm. not being a good mother, not going being a good father. It's not about nothing of these things. Yeah. You know, and so that's that's mm -hmm. that's one of the key points yeah. to understand because yeah. it's it's the person like for myself w for myself was not the class yeah. and very the pain. personal decision. Yeah. You know, and some of us have perfected wearing a mask. Yes. Yes. Right. yes. Exactly. Oh, yes. You know, yeah. being well. the yes. perfect persona right. or the perfect version yes. of what people right. need to right. say exactly. at any given time. Right. Yeah. Yes. Kendra, yeah. I know one of the things that I still hear is just one of the things that you mentioned just now, Amy. Why didn't she think of her daughter? Why didn't she right. think of the pain right. left behind? Why didn't she think of calling a counselor? Why didn't she call me? Why? Because when someone is at that place. And I was going to say, can yeah. we just talk about what the, the frame, yeah. you know, I, I saw some people trying to explain, listen, right. a person who is depressed cannot have right. those thoughts. The, the, the agony and despair exactly. that they're experiencing right. does not allow for no. any other thought yes. no. other than the pain yes. that right. they're feeling. Yes. Right. Can we talk about that just for a second yeah. so we can have a general understanding? Yeah, I mean, I think you're right, and you've identified, you've said it quite well, but I want you to understand when I've worked with a student, for instance, who is in that place, and I've identified that they are in this place of no way out, yeah. that simply cannot hear any rational statement from me as a therapist mm -hmm. that says, you know, oh, tomorrow's going to be different, or things will change, this mm -hmm. too shall pass, that it absolutely has no meaning to them. There's no grounding in that. So working with someone at that place is literally little baby steps, inches, to get to a place slowly over time, number one, deciding whether or not they need medication, right? Mm -hmm. Because some, some people do. Um, yes. I'm not the biggest proponent of medication. However, I recognize that there are those who are chemical yes. imbalances and need some leveling to yeah. assist them. And so that's mm -hmm. a huge piece. Mm -hmm. Two is to really sort of just um, find all the things that they would want to live for, um, mm -hmm. which would help. So if they start mentioning things about a younger sibling or a, a dog or a grandparent, and in the conversation you realize there seems to be this thing or person that keeps coming yeah. up that connects them. Mm -hmm. And they might say it sort of offhandedly, you know, yeah. my dog this or whatever. And you say, wow, tell me more about that. Mm -hmm. Tell me more about what your sister means to you. Tell yeah. me more about that dog. Does, you know, does he play with you? Do you play? And as you start to b draw out from them the things in their life that are connected to them, mm -hmm. you start to see a shift in a person mm -hmm. because you're bringing their brain, sort of grounding them back to central mm -hmm. to say, look, I'm illuminating all the things in your life. And you get it from them. Don't project onto them. Yeah. I think it's really important that we don't say to them, well, you have this and you have that. Yeah. Shouldn't you be happy? Yeah. No. Yeah. When they self-identify mm -hmm. the things in mm -hmm. their life that are of importance mm -hmm. to them, they're connected to illuminate those things yeah. for them. Mm -hmm. Help shine the light on those things. It's a slow process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not easy, you know. And in my capacity, there are days where I sit with students and I sometimes I run up to Eve and I say, I'm really struggling, you know, and I, and I worry. Um, and there are times where I'm on the phone in the middle of the suicide night watch. and I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. on suicide watch. And I need to ensure that this person has not completed a, a suicide. Mm -hmm. Are you awake? Are you alive? You're going to call me at 9 p.m. tonight. You're going to mm -hmm. call me when you, and I have taken mm -hmm. many students to the hospital to see the psych nurse mm -hmm. and say, I'm going with you. Yeah. We're going to go. We're going to get this assessment. You will go. Mm -hmm. I am trying to do this for your, your best interest. Yeah. It is a process. Yes. It, it's, it takes a toll. Um, but I think the mm -hmm. hugest thing is to find out what they're connected to yeah. that would ground them and keep them alive. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything that we should just not do, not say? 
<laughs> tell us, Amy. Please tell us. Amy. No, I'm I'm serious. Yeah. Because, yeah. You know, as 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 Dr. Yeah. Ertier very vividly, yes. you still mm -hmm. remember being told yes. that yeah. phrase that you mentioned earlier. Tell yes. us what what people need to know. Yeah. With the best of intentions, do not say or do not do. Uh, first of all, and in my case, the ones who survive it, they already feel extremely bad. You don't need to make them feel any worse. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know that's 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 the key. Yeah. Don't please don't do it. don't make anyone feel worse. Mm -hmm. uh, w sometimes it's not actually saying anything. Mm -hmm. It's just being there. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just showing your love and your support. Mm -hmm. You know, and like what uh, Ms. Kendra said, highlighting in the positive things that they have a connection with. Mm -hmm. You know, you it's like you get out of that dark, dark, dark place. And you finally see a little light, mm -hmm. like a little mm -hmm. flashlight. Mm -hmm. And if you keep on drawing to yeah. that little light, then you exactly. eventually get out. Yes. But it's, it's mostly about supporting. It's going beyond mm -hmm. just giving a call. Sometimes, like what Ms. Kendra said, it's amazing. Go with them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, middle of the night, you are, are available for them. Mm -hmm. I know sometimes we have so much important things to do. But when it comes to people who we love and care about, even if they're not connected to us rel relative with us, these are human beings. Yes. Mm -hmm. All of us matter. Mm -hmm. All of us have values, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. All of us have a, a word in life. We mm -hmm. have um, this beauty within ourselves. So when we start to see every each one of us like that, then you have a different perspective of the mind, mm -hmm. yeah. of, of understanding them. So it's like, it's mm -hmm. simple. It's just open up your heart and open up your mind mm -hmm. to these things. And sometimes just being there and saying, you know what, I'm supporting you 100%. I'm mm -hmm. here for you. Yeah. That's all it takes yeah. for that Go person ahead. to heal. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, just a, the same thing that she said, and I, I think just just being there for whether it's your friend, your husband, your child, your wife, just yeah. being there and loving them and and letting them know that you care about them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I, I'm not, I'm not, I, you know, I wanted to go to one final thing. I know time is not on our side, but there, there are so many, there are so many husbands that, that have got wives that are depressed and wives that have got husbands that are, uh, that are, yes. that are depressed. Yes. But because we're so used to each other, yes. we would talk to each other in exactly. a different, in a different yeah. shade. And then you want somebody in next to you who would want to be there. Because we live together and we share this thing together, when yes. you get in that dark place, then you, again, yes. like, I'm yes. so tired of that. And this yes. does not help them. No. Exactly. How do you cope with that? No. How do you no. cope with that? What do you tell yeah. somebody who, uh, you know, who's in that dark place, yes. being shoved by the person who yeah. really, who they think should love them? Exactly. That individual is not cognizant of what's going on there. Right. What do you do here? Mm -hmm. I, you don't say anything. You pray for them. Mm. You pray for them. In in um, I love the way you brought it out mm -hmm. because um, hearing you speak about it and saying it that way reminds me of because at the time I was married, mm -hmm. you know. Um, it's um, I still am married, obviously. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, yeah, so, um, but it's um, yeah. You're right. How does that person react? One thing is that I always speak about. It's um, the persons who are in this state of mind, um, I ensure that they realize that whatever family member they have, even if it's a husband, um, a mom or sister, and they're, um, I think they, at the end of the day, they just want the best. They don't know how to react to it. Yeah. They are also frustrated because they do, want, they do love you. It's not that they're um, lashing out in that sense. It's not a sign of, of, of um, of not, of not, not loving yeah. you, yeah. it's that they don't know how to cope with it. It's fear. And, and men, it's fear. and men, the wonderful thing with men is that they solve the, the, they want a solution to the problem. They're problem solvers. Yeah. Yeah. They're they problem solvers. Yes. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it's two different. Yeah. I think in our culture, it would be yeah. more um, so wonderful to educate the men that um, that the men that um, about being just sensitive yeah. Yeah. to the issue. Mm -hmm. It's okay if you see your wife cry. Just give her a hug. Ask mm -hmm. her. You know. Don't work it out for her. Let her open up to you, please. Please. Let her open up to you, yeah. And so that's, that's, that's it, you know. Let her open up to you. 
Yeah, it's just two different ways of yeah, how it is two different yeah. ways. Yeah. You know, yeah. some of that is fear. Just, but just to say. support a little bit of what um, Amy is saying. I know of a situation, very recent situation, where somebody was struggling with postpartum depression yeah. too. Except it, in this case, it was a year or two after mm -hmm. the birth, and apparently it had been de a delayed thing. Their, their husband actually says, you know, you need to get help. Let's go to a counselor. Mm -hmm. And they went to the counselor, and they're getting the help. Yeah. And that's another, so that, that's another thing yeah. that you can do. You recognize that there's a problem, mm -hmm. and you support the problem lovingly. But knowing that you can't fix it, as right. Amy says, there's someone that can help you to fix it. Though. And it has nothing to do with you. Right. Yeah, right. right. And, for the, and for the record, I'm going to yeah. say, because I know my husband is watching, <laughs> he's an amazing husband, yeah. and he's a very supportive yeah. husband. And I think, he, yeah, yeah, I think he would advocate for, for men to be more sensitive in that area, yes. Yeah, so, yeah. All right, we've got to close yeah. it off. Yeah. And then I know I, I'm so grateful that we're Talk having morning, this conversation, but the yes. most yeah. important point to get out for anybody who's watching, who feels that they're on the brink, where do we go? Who do we reach out to? Yeah. What do we do? And if I'm a family member as well, where do we go? I mean, luckily, as we, as we broaden this training work uh, countrywide, right now uh, we've had several uh, folks from the hospitals, general hospitals, the prison, mm -hmm. um, CROs, youth hostel. Um, we have had some youth counselors from the schools um, in Cayo, Dangriga, and Belize City, uh, San Pedro, Toledo area have all joined in some of these trainings. Okay. I'm thinking of the areas that are currently been trained across the 100 plus people countrywide and we uh, plan to extend that even further up north and then deep south. So I think, you know, asking, you know, calling the local hospital, calling even some of the community police okay. and saying, I need to reach a psych nurse or I need to get an assessment, I need help, um, a local counselor, um, if, if lo and behold, you need to call me at Galen, I can transfer out to you. Yeah. I'm going to get a flood of phone calls. <laughs> but there's um, a psych but nurse I have, there are psych nurses. Clinic. Exactly. Yes, yeah. And my yes. understanding is that um, the ministry, that they're going to be hiring a new set okay, of 15 uh, countrywide. And so we are slowly moving in the, in the position of broadening, expanding. Right. And key um, thing is that they don't, you don't have to pay. If you go to no, a public no, clinic, no, 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 no. Because it's people free. think free. therapy is expensive. It's free. No. No, you it's go free. to a psych nurse at a polyclinic or no, at no, a, a, free. A, a government hospital, no. there will it's be a psychiatric free. nurse, Absolutely. someone trained, and there's no yes. cost yes. involved. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. And when it comes to family, personal persons, like you said, um, how do we help? Um, just take the extra interest. Be aware yeah. of what, you know, if you, you know your friend better than anyone. You know your, so you just, just, don't take it for granted. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I believe not taking things for granted every day. So just look at that. And from there on, mm -hmm. you will be able to help them the most you could. Yeah. Ladies, right. thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you, thank you too, guys, thank for you having for us. The opportunity. Yeah. Thank, yeah. You. Thank, you. thank you for the work that you're doing as well and for coming on and sharing your deeply personal stories, but also in, in, in view of having others uh, yes. be able to do more and to yes. help more as well. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, you so, Thank you. you so much. We're going to go ahead now and take a break. And when we come back, we'll have some music. We'll be talking about the Jazz Festival. Good.